is the, one of the, the foundations of a successful future. That's what we are trying to do in the project called OpenStax. Uh, previously, uh, it was named Connections, but it's an, uh, an activity that started in 1999. Professor Richard Baranuk in the Electrical Engineering Department at Rice started changing the way we publish technical material, and now it's all educational material. In fact, it's all material in general. What, um, what I want to, uh, to do is look at the innovations in, uh, in education. It's coming from three different sources. There's actually more, but there's three primary sources. That is, a new type of textbook you already know that in the sense you read things on a Kindle or you read things even on your iPhone, although I tried and can't do that. Uh, a new type of course, the MOOC. All of you are familiar with the massive open online uh, courses. And a new type of personalized learning where we're using the, the techniques, the algorithmic techniques that Netflix and Amazon and many other of the big internet companies use in order to look at your patterns and then suggest to you a better course for the future. So when you say, you have bought so-and-so, I think you might be interested in this. After you've uh, bought a lot, and I have, at Amazon, they're pretty good at offering me something. I say, huh, that is, that is. Out of the thousands of books that could be presented to me, they present 10 books. Two or three of those actually I'm, I'm interested in. So the idea of browsing, which of course you can't do on the internet, well actually you can, and you've got a guide, and it's a personal guide, that nobody else has that guide. That guide is yours, because it has been trained on all of your past performance. Now, that has been, uh, Madison Avenue has known that for a long time, and they use it for advertising, and they try to put things in front of you that you're liable to buy. Well, I'm less interested in that. I'm more interested in putting things in front of you. If I discover that, uh, you know, you're, you didn't do too well in factoring polynomials. And so I'm going to present you material to help you improve factoring polynomials. And uh, you didn't handle the uh, quantum physics uh, course too well. So I, I will uh, present the material to you in a way that will suit your background. So your interests your background, your abilities, your goals, and the goals of the institution you're in can all be tailored to present you a specialized environment. That's yet to happen, but it's right on the edge. It's right on the edge. A lot of the stuff you've heard about big data is going to fit in like a glove. Big populations, just what uh, Steve talked about. What um, the reason that this is uh, so important and what I want to talk about next is the uh, reaction to society to the cost of education. You students, uh, your parents, I promise you, are distressed over the cost of education. And someday when you have kids and send them to school, uh, you will be distressed too because it has grown at an incredible rate. Access. Part of the problem we have is that the poor and the people who live in, in certain areas don't have access to the internet and therefore don't have access to a lot of what the current and future society will offer. And then the last one right here is in order for us to compete in the international marketplace, we have to have an educated and trained workforce. In order for us to have a stable and productive society, if we're a democratic nation, you must have an educated voter base. If people are uneducated, they can't work and they can't vote. Now, disruptive technologies, and you, you're, you're in an age where you have seen a number of disruptive technologies. Now, many of you don't know it because you didn't live through an era where uh, there were no uh, really disruptive technologies, but this, this past several decades has been rather startling. Now these, uh, these disruptions occur in two phases. The first phase is where the new technology does what the old technology does, it just does it better. 
I mean, this pointer is an example. It is a laser pointer, which needs a recharged battery. Uh, <laughs> we need a better battery. Uh, but the laser was never invented to be a pointer. It was invented actually as a uh, scientific curiosity, not to build a, a physical product at all. However, in the second, the second uh, phase is when the success of the first phase redefines the problem. Photography. At first, it merely mimicked painting. Then it became a completely new art form and recording form. Uh, rec uh, the phonograph. The telephone. All of these took what people could do naturally. I mean, we can talk, we can paint, uh, we can walk, but with the car, with the airplane, with the telephone, the telegraph, uh, we can do these things far, far better, and then all of a sudden a different world uh, emerges. So um, let's look at the book. We've got books all over the place. Uh, I've got, I, I spend a sizable chunk of my uh, income on Amazon and have a large number of books and uh, a, a growing number of those are actually on my uh, Kindle. So, uh, you know, like several thousand books. That wasn't really uh, easy to do a couple of generations ago. Now it's very easy to do. One of the things that prevents me from having more books is uh, cost. So bringing the cost of the books down is a major uh, goal of ours. The, from the point of view of education, the book is the technology. And you should look, when people say, well, uh, we need to go back to the book and not use technology. The book is technology. The book was a radical technology when it came into being. And it, it changed the world. So uh, it's a mature technology. And usually when that uh, technology has become mature, you're looking for innovation to look at the next phase. It's unlikely that the book is the optimal way to store and transmit information. And now that we've come along with the internet and the computer, it's clear that it is not. It's not totally clear what the next phase is going uh, to be. So we look at the price of textbooks. Now take a, take a look at that uh, chart. We're outrunning, when I say we, the textbook, the cost of textbooks, are outrunning even medical services, which are over the top, that are outrunning uh, house prices. And then the consumer's uh, price index, which just takes into account inflation, is down there on the, uh, the bottom. So the cost of books right now is the major limiting factor in community colleges. Most of you, you know, if you had to pay $250 for a physics book, that's annoying. Uh, it, it may even put a slight kink in you or your parents' uh, bank account. But the person in, in a community college who generally has no extra income, parents are not sending them to school and their company is not sending them, it prevents them from getting an education. The cost of books is higher than the tuition. There's no reason that should be the case. So, so in 1999, 1999 Connections, up at the top there, uh, spelled with an X, and with an, uh, a web address of cnx.org. Note the .org, it's not a .com, so it's a not-for-profit uh, operation. Uh, currently we have about 1,400 books in Connections. And we have over 22,000 modules. These are small chunks of information that you put together to build a book. Uh, over a million users a month in over uh, 190 countries. And uh, we have the STEM, con uh, Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics content, accessed over 100 million times since 2007. Here's an example of a group of people who have been putting together some material. Uh, the fellow on the left, who's a Rice uh, alum, uh, Doug Williams at Georgia Tech. Next to him is Ohio State. Next to him is Wisconsin. And on the right, uh, Al Hero at uh, Michigan. Now, the, on the right side of the slide here, you see some of the schools that are involved with this project. 
Here are two uh, interesting success stories that were not anticipated. At the top, uh, uh, Kitty uh, Jones, when she was an undergraduate student here at Rice, uh, later, I think she did her undergraduate work in chemistry, then got a master's degree in music, and teaches uh, kids music. What she discovered is there's no good book on music theory for the teachers of children's music. There's music theory written for other music theoreticians, and other academics, but not written for teachers of music. So a piano player who's teaching piano generally doesn't know anything about the theory of music. So she started writing books for that. She became one of the most popular, uh, she, le she learned about connections from her husband, who's on the faculty at, at uh, Illinois in electrical engineering. Uh, she asked him, could I use that for my music content? And being, you know, the usual supportive husband that he was, he said, probably not. And, uh, and being the, the uh, obedient wife that she was, she went ahead and did it anyway. And her material is probably ten times as popular as his material. A little irony there. Now, the, this lower guy, uh, Sonny uh, Singh, a father in uh, Delhi, who didn't like the physics material that his kids were getting in high school. So he started writing notes, and then he discovered connections, and he started publishing those notes all over the world, all over the English-speaking world. People are using his physics book. He's a, I mean, he's a chemical engineer. He has a good education, but he's somebody. He's not a, 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 a normal published author. Um, one of our colleagues, uh, Rich Baranuk, has a, a textbook that's uh, fairly popular. Some kids, now those, those, when I saw them, I thought they were some junior high school students. No, actually, they're graduate students out at uh, uh, UT El Paso, translated a bunch of his material into Spanish. The usage just skyrocketed all over Latin America. Suddenly, they had high quality uh, material available. And there, were, there, there wasn't before that. So there's a fantastic opportunity opened up there. Uh, now that we're dealing with this over the internet, we can do some things we could never do when it was on a piece of paper. Such as, you know, at 2 in the morning, you'd like to run your, your uh, control theory lab about how, does it, how would I move this device at the bottom to balance that inverted pendulum. So you can sit down and run an experiment. It may take you 10 minutes. It may take you 10 hours. But you do it at your own pace, sitting there with your computer, and finally say, ha, ah, now I understand. You know, close it up and go to sleep. The rate of growth, I think most of you know when something on the web goes, quote, viral. What that means is it is growing exponentially. And all of you know your rice people. All of you know that if you see an exponent, you're looking at the solution to a first order differential equation. And that first order differential equation tells you that there is feedback, that the output gets fed back in the input, which produces more output, which then produces more, and that gives you this exponential growth. Now, the average uh, student from some other university wouldn't appreciate that and wouldn't have the deep insight that you have. <laughs> Now, uh, just a few years ago, Rich uh, started a, a, a second version of Connections called OpenStax, and it's trying to address the community college issue. And it's doing that. We've uh, produced uh, five, well, actually, we're probably close to 10 or 11 books now, very high-quality books written by and endorsed by Nobel Prize winners, National Academy members, uh, the smartest people sort of in our collective uh, community, and made available on the net, on the uh, web, free. And in printed form for very low cost. This is a very big deal. Okay, then at the book end of things, MOOCs. The cost, of higher uh, the cost of higher education com hasn't grown as fast as the cost of books, but I think you all know it has grown pretty fast. Uh, the lecture, <laughs> the very thing we're doing right here, is obsolete. Uh, it, like the book, is an old technology. It's efficient in that I can talk to a bunch of you all at once, use a little microphone and make it loud enough. 
Uh, but it is, it is an obsolete uh, technology. In, uh, oh, probably four or five years ago, the MOOC was invented, massive, open, online course. It started at Stanford, quickly though jumped to the uh, East Coast where uh, Harvard and MIT picked it up. And you have now the uh, Coursera. How many of you have heard about Coursera? It's a dot com. People have invested in it and they expect a return, so be careful. <laughs> I, I like Coursera. Uh, I mean, one of the people who invested in it is a Rice alum, John Doerr, that is quite uh, confident in its future. Udacity is taking a slightly different uh, and a less uh, visible uh, route. The one I'm most interested in is edX out of MIT and Harvard. It's a dot org. It's a not-for-profit. And I think that in the long run, that will end up solving our problems better than the dot com. But the wonderful thing about America is uh, if you've got a and a B, do them both. And let the market decide which one of them works. And uh, here's an introductory course at MIT. 150,000 students started, but only 7,000 ended up finishing. Here's the introductory course that maybe some of you even took here at Rice that Don Johnson teaches. Started off with 37,000, only 257 uh, finished. Take a look at this. Uh, look at the, the, the little blue X's, lecture video views. So nice internet, you can keep up with what's going on, see how they dropped off. There's some interesting uh, things. Whenever you take uh, a course, a, a uh, MOOC, Always take at least five before you can you you know what you're doing if you decide then not to take any more. So you see this sharp drop off to five, and then it kind of levels out. Look at this. Where are the people in the world taking MOOCs? U.S. Okay. India. Yeah. India. Partly because it's got a big population and uh, English is is. Uh, is a second language. But then Russia, okay, Canada, another English speaking culture, Portugal, Spain, Egypt, UK, Pakistan. They're similar to India in the sense of, of having a lot of, of English speakers, but uh, Brazil, and it levels off, it runs away out there. It is touching the world, it truly is. The uh, people who are taking it, Unfortunately, a lot of the high schoolers are not taking it. Just th this one, take a second to look at it. You take videos longer and longer and longer. It, for, uh, people watch it longer and longer and then they start watching it less and less. The maximum is six minutes. So see, we, uh, we, uh, we lost you a long time ago, back six minutes into Steve's uh, talk. Uh, the personalized learning system, and that's where we're applying these uh, machine learning, the modeling of the student, and the feedback to model the material that is sent to you. Uh, your assignment is to go look at some of this material. Take a MOOC. Go to, go to Coursera or edX and take a MOOC. You'll be happy. Thanks. Good,